Hello, members of the Arlington Stake. I hope this video finds you well. I look forward to the time when we can meet again. In the meantime, I have been thinking a little bit about Alma chapter 5, when Alma the Younger speaks to the people of Zarahemla about what it means to be converted to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He invites his listeners to self-reflect by asking them 50 questions. The first three questions introduce his broader themes. And now, behold, I ask of you, my brethren of the church, have ye spiritually been born of God? Have ye received his image in your countenances? Have ye experienced this mighty change in your hearts? These three metaphors teach us about the definition and process of conversion. To be born again means to leave our old selves behind and begin new lives as children of God, part of the family of Christ. To have a mighty change of heart means to significantly adjust our desires, beliefs, and characteristics, to become less like our natural selves and more like Christ. Both of these metaphors are pretty common throughout scriptures, but the middle one is unique to Alma. What does it mean to receive the image of God in our countenances? To explore this question, I thought it might be a good idea to create an image of Christ, to paint a picture of him. We all think we know what the Savior looks like. We've seen recognizable images of him our whole lives, but we actually have no idea what he really looked like in mortality. The New Testament doesn't describe his features. It's probable that he did not look much like our typical artistic renderings, tall, light-skinned, long-haired, bearded. In physical appearance, he may have looked rather ordinary. When the soldiers came to arrest him, they could not pick him out of a crowd. Isaiah, looking forward to Christ's time, simply said, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. In mortality, Jesus may have had an olive complexion and been fairly short, like most people in Galilee. He might have had long hair, but short hair was more common in his place and time. I assume he was bearded, since that was Jewish custom, but I really don't know. The oldest paintings we have of Jesus date from hundreds of years after his death and resurrection. Even later, the Byzantines styled Jesus as looking like a Byzantine emperor, and that image has stuck for the most part. Because I want others to recognize the subject of my painting, that's the model I am following. Returning to Alma's question, I think we can safely say that receiving Christ's image in our countenance does not mean growing long hair or a beard or getting tall and skinny. Instead, the word image refers to Christ's likeness or reflection. The word countenance means face, but it also refers to behavior, demeanor, and conduct. In other words, Alma is saying that to be truly converted, our behavior, attitudes, and characteristics need to be like Christ's, to reflect his behavior, attitudes, and characteristics. So how do we go about doing that? First, we need to recognize that like being born again or having a change of heart, receiving Christ's image in our countenance is a lifelong process. Alma explained it by describing the conversion of his father when he heard Abinadi preach. Behold, I can tell you, did not my father Alma believe in the words which were delivered by the mouth of Abinadi? And was he not a holy prophet? Did he not speak the words of God, and my father Alma believed them? And according to his faith, there was a mighty change wrought in his heart. Behold, I say unto you that this is all true. And behold, he preached the word unto your fathers, and a mighty change was also wrought in their hearts, and they humbled themselves and put their trust in the true and living God. And behold, they were faithful until the end. Therefore, they were saved. Alma says we must believe the word of God, try to follow Christ's example, humbly put our trust in God, and remain steadfast and faithful until the end. In practical terms, this means we try to be kind, to serve others, to keep the covenants we've made with God, and to repent when we make mistakes. But note the word receive. It's passive. 
In the scriptures, to receive something means to accept it as a gift given by someone else. In fact, the gift of conversion comes only through the grace and blood of Christ. In our own small ways, we try to imitate and emulate the Savior, but it is only because of and through Christ's sacrifice that we can truly receive his image or become like him. Alma calls this being cleansed through the blood of Christ. He refers to a future day at the bar of judgment when this process is complete. I say unto you, can ye look up to God at that day with a pure heart and clean hands? I say unto you, can you look up having the image of God engraven upon your countenances? Note the word engraven. It recalls Isaiah's messianic imagery. Behold, I have engraven thee upon the palms of my hands, reminding us of the Savior's crucifixion. It refers to a permanent change. If his image is engraven upon our countenances, we are no longer simple imitators. We have actually become like him. The word engraven also reminds me that Christ is the artist, the engraver, and we are his creations. I have been painting a picture of Jesus, but I am no master artist. The actual master, Christ, will perform a much greater work of art on us if we let him. This is how C.S. Lewis puts it. Christ, here and now, is doing things to you. He is interfering with your very self, killing the old natural self in you and replacing it with the kind of self he has. At first, only for moments, then for longer periods. Finally, if all goes well, turning you permanently into a different sort of thing into a being which, in its own small way, has the same kind of life as God, which shares his power, joy, knowledge, and eternity. As we read Alma chapter 5, we are asked to ponder 50 questions. I invite you to reread that chapter and self-reflect on all 50, but I especially invite you to ponder what it means to have the image of God engraven on our countenances to gradually become more and more like Christ, to show the light and love of the Savior in our eyes, in our smiles, in the way we talk and think and act and serve and love. Someday we will no longer have to wonder what Christ looks like. We will see him, we will recognize him, and he will see what we have become after a lifelong process of being born again having a mighty change in our hearts, and having his image engraven upon our countenances. As the Apostle John said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.